Okay, so how do we solve a radical equation? There are kind of four steps to solve these, and these are the four steps. So I'm going to get another color pen here. Um, first, you want to isolate the radical. You want to get it by itself on one side of the equal sign. So you want to have this radical on one side. Then you want to look at the nth, the power. So if it's the if it's just the square root, then the nth power we're going to raise it to is um, two. Or if it's a cube root, we'll raise it to the third. So look at the nth power and raise both sides because it is an equation. So you have to raise both sides of the equation to that power. And then that gets rid of your radicals in most cases. We are going to have one or two that's not quite the same. But uh, for the most part, you can now solve for the variable. And then, as always, you want to check your answer, or sometimes it's answers, if there's more than one answer, to look for extraneous solutions. Now, this extraneous solutions concept goes back to the very first slide. First slide, which one do you think would have extraneous solutions? A square root or a cube root? I am hoping you're thinking probably a square root because, yes, the, the radical square root equations do have limited domains, so you have to be careful and check for those extraneous solutions. So let's try one here. Okay, our first example. We want to isolate the radical. Well, this radical is already isolated, so all we have to do is raise both sides to the nth power. Well, since this is a square root, we're just going to square both sides. So square the left side, square the right side, and the square and the square root just cancel, and you end up with x minus 2 is equal to 7 squared or 49, and then add your 2, and you get 51. So x is 51, and let's just check it to make sure. 51 minus 2 is 49, so the square root of 49 is indeed a positive 7. Okay. So that one checks out okay, so that solution is a good solution. Now let's look at the second one. Let's sub we need to isolate the radical, so we need to subtract 9 from both sides, and that leaves us with 3 times the square root of x is equal to 6, so the square root of x is equal to 2, and then we get the radical by itself. So that it took us several steps to get step 2 raise um, the, to isolate the radical, which is actually step one, sorry. And then step two, let's square both sides. And we get x is equal to four. And again, let's check our solution. So let's go back, plug it into the original equation. Three times the square root of four. So that's gonna give us six plus nine. Does that equal 15? Yes, indeed it does. So this is a good solution. So there are two very simple radical equations. Okay, let's look at a couple more. Let's look at uh, this one, okay? So we've got the square root of 2x minus 1 is equal to negative 3. The, the radical is already isolated, so let's square both sides. And we're going to get x minus 2, or 2, I'm sorry, 2x minus 1 is equal to 9. Add your 1, so you get 2x is equal to 10. So x is 5. Now, let's check this one. When we go back and plug it in, we get the square root of 2 times 5 minus 1. Okay, that's 10 minus 1 is 9. So the square root of 9 is that negative 3. And the answer is no, it is not. The square root of 9 is 3. Now, the square root, this is when it gets a little tricky. People say, well, when you square root both, when you have the, take the square root, you get positive and negative solutions. Yes, that is true if you're starting with x squared equals 9. When you take the square root of both sides, you end up with x having two possible solutions of positive and negative 3. Okay, when you're taking the square root of an x squared, we have two possible answers, numbers we can square to get 9. But the square root of 9 
This is a positive in front of that term. Therefore, we're only looking at the positive solution, so that one is not a solution. So if you want to check it, we checked it. It didn't work, so this one has no solution. Okay, so let's look at this one.